Hello and welcome to this uh, masterclass video on snapshots. Now, this is a new feature that we've added. Uh, the video shouldn't be that long, but I wanted to go over this with you today. Now, to demonstrate this, I've created a pair of surfaces that don't really look the same, but they uh, share some interface elements. Um, and we can see that one surface can drive the other. For instance, if I hit the uh, play button within this uh, this bottom surface, uh, it will start playback of a song in the top surface. And if I alter this uh, rotary volume knob here, you can see that the knobs control the fader in the second surface. So what I've done is I've keyed, I've paired up some of the controls, just so you can see the toing and froing of messages going backward and forward. These three mutually excluded buttons are duplicated in the other surface, as is this stepper control. So we have a nice uh, test bed here to try out uh, the snapshots feature. And when we apply snapshots, we can see them relayed to that second surface. Imagine that second surface being a, um, a piece of hardware. So if we head off to the main menu and look under open windows, We've now got this uh, snapshot window that we can open. And uh, I'm going to try and place this at the bottom, try and get everything on screen best I can. Now I want you to notice that this window contains 12 buttons labelled 1 to 12, meaning that we have 12 snapshots available. Now the idea is you configure the surface as you want. In other words, let's set this out, uh, output volume knob to a specific position. And I'm going to long press the uh, the snapshot one button. And you'll see that that snapshot is now active and it's lit up. Now let's reconfigure the surface by changing the output volume. Um, we, we'll adjust this stepper to uh, a known value. I'll set that to 80. And we'll change these uh, mutually excluded buttons so the middle one's selected. And then I'm going to long press the snapshot 2 button. Now hopefully you'll notice this program change button here. And that's set to uh, change the patch within uh, a version of Copperhead I have loaded uh, into an instrument slot. If, you, if I press that button you'll see the patch change. That's a recent addition to Copperhead, by the way. It might be worth checking out. I've done a, a video on that. Now that is a dual state button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, long press on uh, snapshot three and that state of that button will be stored along with all the rest of the surface in snapshot three. So now we have three snapshots stored in the first three snapshot buttons. And I can just tap on these buttons now to uh, switch state now I don't know how it's best to show this, but uh, let's just move this down and out of the way. But as I flick between snapshots, you can see the saved snapshots are restoring values in surface A, and those have been reflected in surface B. Now if we switch to scene 2 on both of these surfaces, you'll see that I've got a couple of XY pads as well wired up so that uh, one controls the other. And uh, if I want to uh, position those at a point and long press on uh, snapshot one, I can overwrite snapshot one and then reposition at snapshot two and I can overwrite snapshot two. Now when I switch snapshots, you can see the XY pad change. So it's important to note that these snapshots work across all six scenes. Now if we long press on one of these scene buttons, uh, you'll see a pop-up menu and there's an option to rename the button. So we can actually give these scenes names. So if just for, for, for name's sake, I'm going to give them the names uh, Intro, Verse and Chorus, uh, just so that we've got something written on those buttons. So just visualise that these three buttons are changing the state for each part of a song, for instance. So supposing we've captured um, a set of snapshots uh, and we want a more convenient way of switching snapshots directly from the surface. Well, there is a way to do that. And I'm going to start by uh, resizing this surface and just giving ourselves a little bit more vertical space. 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a button object to uh, this surface. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than that and I'm going to tap and hold with two fingers and drag to the right so that we've got three buttons, three identical buttons. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go head over to the object properties and then tap the function button. Now we can pick functions from this and it assigns a particular function to the button. But if you look at the bottom of this menu there's a new option uh, called select snapshot. And when we hit that we can then press the data button and select an actual snapshot to apply it to that button. I'm going to repeat that process with uh, the next two buttons. So I'm going to pick select snapshot and then pick snapshot number two. And again, select snapshot and then snapshot number three. Now those three buttons now, if I come out of edit mode and test those out, you'll see that when I press the buttons, it will switch from um, snapshot one to snapshot two to snapshot three. Um, and we can see that and we don't actually need this floating snapshot window at all to change snapshot. So that's just about it for the snapshots. Uh, let's take a look at something else that was uh, added in the last version and that's the ability to change the uh, vertical axis. You can invert the vertical axis now on an XY pad. Now for this I'm going to utilize this XY pad on scene 2 of uh, each of these uh, interfaces and um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to one of these uh, XY pads try and make as much room as I can to demonstrate this I'm going to go into edit mode and uh, look at the properties of this uh, bottom XY pad and uh, we're going to click on the data button at the uh, under the function button on the right hand side now normally in here we can set the um, the glide features but now you'll notice there's a additional invert button now if we exit edit mode you'll notice as, as I push my finger to the top the uh, the second surface XY pad is moving in the opposite direction um, but this uh, there's, there's some useful situations for this now if I go to uh, the second surface and uh, invert that one also, uh, they'll both move in sync. So now I push up for maximum volume instead of pull down. Now the next thing I want to talk about is uh, snap to grid and how objects snap and the margins, the interior margins are related. So by default, all objects snap to grid. But you'll probably have noticed that when we select an object, it doesn't actually, it's, the object uh, boundary does not not necessarily match that of the grid. And that's simply because there's an internal margin set on that object. If we were redu to reduce that internal margin to zero, it would line up with the grid. But a lot of objects have a, B, a default internal margin set. And there's a good reason for this. As you can see, if I click on this object and alter the margin, we can uh, we can increase that margin quite substantially. And the reason is for spacing. When we're laying objects out, we often want spacing. So all objects just about have this margin option, and we can actually uh, add uh, more margin to that. And I can hear you crying, why Why do we do this? And there's a simple answer to this. Um, if I just uh, delete a couple of these knobs down here and select this first knob and then try duplicating the knob by just tapping with two fingers uh, on, the, on the surface and just drag in to the right, I've duplicated that knob and you can see they're duplicated with the current margin. Now with knobs it's not so crucial, but if we were to uh, start off with this uh, one button, for instance, let's just move that knob out the way and reduce the size of that button a little bit more. Now I'm going to reduce the margin size back down to zero, and if we attempt to create uh, a three by two grid of these 
you'll notice that they're actually touching each other. Now that would not occur if we if the first item we duplicated had a margin set. So by default a lot of these objects have margins so that when you go and duplicate or create a grid of objects they're spaced evenly and all you have to worry about is snapping the selection rectangle into position. Now another question that I keep being asked is how do we set the defaults? So for instance the defaults when we double tap on a knob and the value sent when we uh, tap on a button for instance. Now to help us here I'm going to open the MIDI monitor and toggle the monitor button till it's uh, showing output so we want to monitor the output of these objects. The next thing we need to do is just to make sure that both objects uh, have got uh, MIDI out enabled so make sure a channel is selected there. Now by default a button has a press state and a depress state and if we press that button you'll notice that by default we send a value of 127 because we're 7-bit MIDI and when I release we're sending a value of 0. Now generally hardware sees 0 as off and any other number as on and most of the time we won't want to be sending notes we want to be sending controller changes so um, we're sending 127 and 0 then by default but you can change this uh, in the object properties dialog and click it on the data button underneath the um, the MIDI setup uh, in this case it's saying tap to edit defaults and when this dialog appears we can alter the pressed and depressed states so um, I'm going to set this up a little bit differently and test this out and we can now see when I press we're sending 120 and when I release we're sending 10. Now the default state of a knob is actually what happens uh, when we double tap on a knob. Uh, usually it gets reset to zero. So if I just tap on that knob, double tap sorry, uh, you'll notice it immediately goes to zero. and some knobs uh, if we attach functions to them get different defaults but by default most knobs you add to a surface uh, when you double tap it will go instantly to zero but we can come into the object properties and click on the data uh, button to edit the defaults and we can change that default double tap uh, setting so here you can see that now when i double tap we're getting a value of 32. So that's just about it for this video. I said it would be short. Don't forget to thumb up the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Three, two, one.